And here we go, top left position on Ohana is the Protoss player for Mo Sports. His idea is... Moju Mana. It's like Heaven is like sneaking up on the players when he observes them. <laughs> yeah, he kind of is. Here with Mana, pretty, pretty calm. Focusing on the game right now, a map that he has prepared for, for his Code S matches as well. At the bottom right starts his opponent. Taking a win in game number two, forcing this third game on Ohana. It is the FXO player, it's the Charon who calls himself. FXO ASD. And if you want to support those two players, check them out on Twitter. Mana is at MouseMana and ASD is at FXO ASD. Both of them, therefore, can be easily found on Twitter. Yeah, very easily. Um, now, if I had to guess what type of build we would see from Mana, in this game, I would say that we will see similar build to what we saw in his up and down group against Keen. That same type of High Templar attack, that type of build that he's very comfortable with, confident on. He practiced already for the up and down matches. Will we see it again? I think so. And ASD, likely on the other hand, I think will do a build that he just won with last game, a similar build, some type of one base play with factory tech, because that's what he's had success with already in this series. Plus, it's something he's known for even outside of, of this particular season of GSL. Oh, the probe gets in! This is exactly what ASD was about to prevent, but the probe gets inside and now he can check the gas. What Mana tried to do sometimes on this map for while he was training a four, warp ga a four gateway build with a warp prism, uh, kind of what we've seen today used against Jokji on Abyssal City. But most of the time when he faces an Terran opponent on this map, he tries to play a, sta a straight up game. And his weapon of choice usually is just the High Templar play. This is one of the maps where he really struggled against drop play, and this made him build pylons at the bottom left of his main base and also send out Observer a lot more than on other maps. Now, Mana was actually mining only from two harvesters in this gas until he saw his opponent's gas and he put three inside. May mean that he was trying to get a faster one gateway expand out first, but now decided to, to not only put three in, but take a second assimilator because he wants to be careful about what ASD is doing. Does not want to fall prey to another all-in like we saw last game. I'm really interested of how exactly this game is going to work out, especially what ASD is going to do. This to me is more the question, and we have him already with the transition into a factory. The one base play really worked well for him in game number one, and now he's taking the second gas. So we will definitely see some uh, really tech-oriented play by him. And we might not see an expansion. He might go for exactly the same build that he used in the Truth Valley. And then the question is, how well can Mana defend against it? Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, I think that... I mean, Mana, he made a few critical mistakes in the last game against ASD, but I feel more so that it was just the ASD controlled his unit so well. I mean, he is really known for this. He trains with Epixo the best. They both actually play a similar playstyle in this matchup oftentimes. Uh, I used to sit next to them oftentimes and watch them train when I was on Epix Open. They're both really strong players, and they really love this factory style off of one base. They can expand behind it if they do enough damage, or they can make it into an all-in type strategy like we saw last game. A very scary opponent to face for Mana. I don't think his nerves really got shaken, though, so I don't think that... I mean, ASD may be banking on, well, I think he was a little bit nervous. I got him. Maybe I can do it again. I don't think he's banking on that here. No, I, I don't think so either, but on the other hand, he saw that he is definitely in a position where he can put a lot of pressure with this build against Mana, so him going for a similar build once again might be exactly what he needs. But he can already see that he wants to start things off with a Banshee this time, and not with a build that he chose to play on a Toon Valley, where he was banking his hopes on a Marine and uh, Hellion composition. So right now the Banshee is being built, but he chooses to not take Cloak, so he's just going for the Banshee and goes straight for the Siege Tanks, so Mana will have an Observer out with the faster robotics that he built and he will know what's going on. But once again, ASD has been seen, especially on Antigua earlier, to wait for the Observer, to try to look for it, to take it down early. If he succeeds in doing so, Mana might be in serious trouble. Yeah, you're so right. Uh, the one thing Mana though does have that will help him defend against, or you know, help him protect his Observer, for example, is that the probe is on the Watchtower. The Marines are in the main base for ASD, so he knows that he's got a pretty decent path right now with the Observer, and he'll probably be able to see, at the very least, the Starport or the Reactor Barracks. There's not much the ASD can do to stop him, unless he moves his Marines down right now, but he doesn't even know the direction it's coming from. He doesn't have the Watchtower. The second bench is being built while the first one is heading out and we also have another scout on the ground trying to get up the ramp. Will be immediately taken down by the by the uh, units that are there. Yeah, we couldn't see it on the screen but we have seen it on the minimap well now. 
suddenly the uh, Banshee is approaching and Mana sees what's going on. He sees the two siege tank, he knows about the starport, he knows everything that's going on and at the top the Banshee is already in position and we have the second Immortal already yeah. for Mana. Mana is actually already doing uh, a build that essentially is strong against what AST is doing. He waited with his Nexus, got his robotics out quickly and then has already started to boost out those morals. As you said, a second one already coming out here. The Banshee may be somewhat of a problem for him, though. He's going to have to deal with this. There's no cloak. Yeah, he has to warp in additional Stalkers. This is one of the things that he didn't do just yet. He only has two, but he's able to force his opponent back for now. Harvest has killed so far four, including the scouting uh, probe, of course. Uh oh. oh that's Someone so is cool. lagging. That's really unfortunate right now. I don't know who exactly that is. Who I that think that affect. is Junwi's computer. He's the guy who hosts the lobbies and uh, former IM player actually. But he is, I think, the one who might drop out here. So, anyway, uh, right now what Mana is doing actually is everything he needs to do. Now the toughest way to hold a push like this that's more siege tank heavy than uh, banshee heavy is to make sure you build the right ratio of units because even though the banshees are going to be less you're going to make sure you can still deal with those so you have to have enough immortals to deal with the tanks and you have to have enough zealots that can close the distance but if you make too many zealots and you don't have enough stalkers then the banshees start picking off your immortals start picking off your units so you have to be very careful about that because it's not about the banshees themselves it's about the fact that you have to kill the banshees somehow and there's so many siege tanks behind the banshees that if the banshees are just picking out your units just like we saw last game it's, you see the banshee shoot at your stalker but you're like, well, I guess yeah. the Stalker's gonna die. I can't move forward. But the thing is, how Mana actually approached this game so far. Oh, the game was paused immediately. The Observer left. But yeah, how this is actually going to affect things is that Mana at this point was actually doing everything right. He, uh, from the beginning, he started to use his Immortals. He actually did not build too many Gateway units. So an early attack with a lot of Marines, a bio centered attack might have been uh, a bit of a problem. But right now, uh, Mana has at least the means of uh, pushing this back. He knows what's going on at this point. He was already utilizing his robotics in order to get additional Immortals. And now we are jumping back into the game just in a few seconds and we'll see how he's going to follow it up. Here we are. Yeah, it was just the host computer, but everything is fine. Uh, we were just back in the game. And you can see that Mana is adding additional gateways. He wants to build that gateway army to support his Immortals. He's also taken out his rocks, which is awesome because this can allow him to flank and attack that he's going to see. It also means that if he needs to escape for any reason, he will have a way to do so. And here comes now the attack from ASD. Mana might not just be ready. 44 army supply against 29. At the bottom, we still have one Banshee killing uh, an pylon. Oh, and that's an important pylon because that's a pylon he needs right now. Uh, he's building two additional ones right now, but he will be supplied. Oh, this is so unfortunate for him because he just finished his gateways. He wants to spend that money to get that supply up, to even out the supply that you said, you know, that army supply. Oh, he's going to lose a Stalker as well. Uh -oh. Things looking really bad for Mana. Yes, indeed they are. Here comes the scan. Mana is moving out, forcing a siege of his opponents. The pylon are ready right now. Now he can start to warp in units, and he has the third Immortal in just a few seconds. Three tanks in total. How long does Mana wait for this? He's actually trying to force it now. There are the additional Stalkers that he just swapped in, but they are actually ruling the wrong way. He needs to go up again. Mana down to 57. Supply against 66. Trying to kill those Banshees, but the Siege tanks they are un -siege. Can he pull this off? He doesn't have a lot of gateway units here. He really does not. I think he may have to sacrifice his Nexus. I think he has to go up the ramp. If he tries to fight on the bottom again, I think there's just too much. There's too much Marine firepower with the Banshee support. I don't think he can hold this Nexus, Keldor. Uh, things are starting to look grim for Mana. He waits for additional warpings and there they are. But the Banshees are trying to get cheeky, taking down one of the sentries immediately. Things are starting to look grim for the Protoss player. The Nexus is already gone and now Mana decides to walk into the range of the Siege Tanks, trying to take down this force of the Terra player. Targeting down the Siege Tanks with the Immortals. He's going to get them. The Zealots persist, but the thing is, he needs more and more Stalkers to deal with the Banshees. This is what I was talking about before. You either have one or the other, but it's, it's so difficult to make a unit composition that actually deals with both. Mana has a lot of Harvesters, 32 against 16, but the Mules are of course an issue right now. He can hold this, he's trying to hold this one base that he has, waiting for additional units, waiting for the warp ins. Once again, a pylon gets killed and he's down to 55 supply right now against 66. The army supply still in favor of ASD 51 to 20. He doubles it. Mana is going to have to pull a miracle out of a hat to win this game. He has control of the top of this ramp. 
but his his income is not significantly better enough for him to be able to catch up in supply to, or to catch up in army supply to ASD. He needs more production, and ASD actually is producing SCVs again. He can make a command center eventually. Uh oh, this immortal was on rally. He's gonna be careful. He does pick off the marine. That's actually really nicely done using that hardened shield to just get a marine for free there. Mana at this point, of course, really struggling against the one 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 build against the one base push from ASD. Similar to what we've seen in the last game, the Terran player now with this contain and getting more and more units. At some point he can just try to transition into getting a second base with the contain that he has or just take his chances, go up the ramp, but he has to be very careful. If Mana uses a good force field, ASD might still lose this game even though at this point he's far ahead. Oh, nice hit on those Banshees. He actually only loses shields. That was actually extremely well done. He needs to do little things like this and make sure that his opponent does not get up the ramp. That's why he's being so careful. Using only Immortals to fight the Marines. That way they can tank the damage with those hardened shields, but they're just not quite able to kill the Marines. And the probe at their way to the bottom and trying to scout what's going on here. And so far, ASD didn't kill it. And now Mana knows that there's no expansion. He knows there is no second base for ASD. He actually places a pylon down between the two gazes in order to have something to warp in units. Oh wow, but ASD now moving on he to the is high up ground. The ramp. He's gonna have to pull all of his probes here. It looks like he's gonna wait for the next Immortal to come out. But actually, ASD has moved down the ramp, so Mana can wait a little bit longer here. But he's losing pylons, he's starting to lose production. He supply blocked once again. One pylon finishes, but another one gets destroyed, and therefore he needs to wait for the additional two that he just swaps in into his main base. Mana has a slightly better income, but it's just... Alright, he's going... No. He cannot go without his probes if he's going to go like this, I feel. But he can't go down the choke point with or without the probes. So he's just waiting. He's trying to push the Marines down the ramp. He doesn't want his, uh, his facilities to be sieged up here. Uh, Zealot does run into the main base. Yeah, with a Zealot, he might be able to do a little bit of damage in the economy and maybe just catch ASD off guard. But the next set of Marines will be done and then he can defend against it. Will Mana be able to break through here? It's going to be so difficult. The SCVs are immediately attacking the Zealot. And the Zealot will get a few kills. But how will this really affect the game? Three kills so far? Well, I mean, cost-wise, I suppose it's worth it. He's going to warp into another one. Now, Mana has made the next big step in this game. Yeah. He has made the robotic support bay. That may allow him to escape if ASD just sits down there like that. But even if he gets a Colossus out, it's going to be so hard. Now, the Stargate, this is so smart. This is going to be, of course, for the Banshees. This is a great way to catch reinforcing units as well as Banshees. If he can get some Phoenix or some uh, Phoenixes out, but... Uh, the, the situation, though, is not going to be an easy one. Even if he gets the Phoenixes out, that's so much money. He doesn't have a lot of money. He can't make Phoenixes and Colossi and enough gateway units to hold. Yeah, this game is at this point really, really crazy. Mana trying to just hold on to dear life, whereas ASD has done so much damage already. He's still trying to make his way up. There's the scan. Now he has the Observer and knows that Mana has no vision anymore. Even walks up the ramp with another SCV in order to poke. He wants, of course, to know what the follow-up for Mana is going to be. And the first Colossus is being build also the first Phoenix he's trying to make something work against this huge army that is directly in front of his base bunkers even built by ASD yeah. this game is definitely getting insane I like this choice of the bunkers because this is gonna be one way where he can hard basically super hard to contain his opponent I'm a little bit surprised we see this so late we do see ASD now with a Raven. That's going to be so critical in dealing with uh, the Stalkers. The Stalkers will not be able to fire at the Banshees for a few seconds, and every Stalker That's count... the scan. All the Stalker fire counts in this in this game, because you know, okay, I've got to deal with the Banshees somehow, but i got to do all the tanks are on seeds. That's when I get my first or second shot off. And ASD has sent basically all of his SCVs back home as well, so he's not losing mine time. But this is where it begins. You've got to be so careful with these Phoenixes, but he can start to damage these Banshees. As I said, the SCVs are not there to repair them anymore. Range has been started as well. One Marine gets picked off with one of the Phoenixes, but at this point, this is definitely a very clutch game. We have a huge army supply lead currently for ASD. He's 20 supply ahead of Hana. The bunker gets killed. No nice salvage. position. Nice position here with the Immortals, but this is definitely going to be really close. Just look at the supply here, and now, of course, by now we have AST in a good position with this Harvest once one, again. One of the weaknesses of Mana here and the Protoss race is that they cannot fly their next eye to another expansion, whereas AST can very easily move his command center when he mines out. So Mana is on a clock, whereas AST is not. He can very easily move his command center and all of his harvesters to his natural. 
Mana decides to go at those Phoenixes now into the main base of his opponent to do a little bit of damage to the economy, but at the same time, this also means that he won't be able to use them in order to take down a few of the, yeah, well, a few of the Banshees and get shots away at them. But he has a good scout, he forces Marines to stay at home, and there's always a constant threat to ASD's economy yeah. right now. And also he knows that, for example, there's no more Banshees being produced. I mean, that's not a huge thing to know, but it's one small thing, and if a Banshee had been produced, he would be able to kill it for free. Uh, with those phoenixes. It's pretty nice that Mana has actually at the right side of the map yeah. this pilot where he can warp in a few units. He's setting up a flank. He wants to... I mean, it's gonna take forever for him to get enough units to flank properly, but he's gonna try. And he will have a lot of Colossi. Range is also done, and if he uses it properly, then he can do a bit of damage. He can start poking at those Marines for sure, as long as he makes sure he pulls back the Colossi when they, yeah. they don't take enough siege tank fire. They can definitely use the range right now, but it's gonna be a, such a close thing to do. It's really... This game is on Razor's Edge. Mana able to close the supply gap between himself and ASD, but you can see in the mineral base, uh, in the mineral line already, that there are nearly no minerals left. Yeah, I think he's just gonna wait until they're all gone before he goes, I suppose. Yeah, he has to make a stand, and why not wait until you are completely out of resources? Either you win the engagement and you can carry the momentum into your opponent's base, or it's over. And that's exactly what's gonna happen here. By the way, a siege tank has been picked up at the natural. He's just trying to do some damage to it here. He can actually grab it again. This is so critical to be able to do this much damage to a siege tank before exactly. it even arrives on the battlefield. It looks insignificant when you look at it, but look at it a little bit closer and think about what that means. That means that that tank will die to one immortal shot, just a few less stalkers. He might actually just wait for the energy to accumulate on the Phoenix and uh, then take it down. He doesn't stick around though. And now, as you already said, the Nexus, sorry, the uh, command center is going to be used at the natural. So Mana basically has to attack now. He has to go out here because if he doesn't, then ASD will have the economy, whereas Mana doesn't have mining whatsoever. And that's exactly what he scouts for. Yep. Uh, this is a this scary position. He's got those three zealots on the right side. There's so many bunkers, though. This has to trigger an attack. Mana will have to move in his main base. Is he moving out? The army supply, ladies and gentlemen. 83 against 104, and here come the stalkers. The immortal is taking the shots from the siege tanks, but it, the banshees move in and take it down. Yeah, it wasn't worth it. He only killed two marines. He lost an immortal. He's trying to poke, like like I said earlier, with those colossi, using the immortal tank a little bit. He's got to be so careful, though. Yeah. Oh, love the phoenixes for the colossus defense. But it's really, really difficult for him to make this work. We have this Protoss player with a really with a really awesome contain against him. So him taking this down, he can't attack it to the choke point. He will be obliterated by the tanks. And this is... I don't... I actually don't know if he has any hopes whatsoever of breaking through here. I don't think he, he has hopes of breaking through, but... He's got the Warp Prism coming out, which will allow him to harass his opponent's economy. There's several Marines left at home just for this purpose. I, I mean, he's, we're actually just watching him die a slow death. He's going to go for a Colossus drop. This is actually going to be really cool because this could be enough to kill those Marines and do a ton of damage to the economy and force ASD to send some heavy units back home. Or at the very least, make a Viking. It looks like he's rather trying to set up a flank here from the side. That's at least what I... Yeah, no, it's definitely... You're absolutely right. I, I thought about this earlier, but this is so difficult to make work. He actually... If he actually gets away with this, he could... He could actually lift everything and go attack ASD's main. Then he would force ASD to move. That would be the one way he could really force ASD to move. But he's going to need to bring a probe as well. He only has 135 minerals, and that's all the money he's ever going to have. He needs to be able to make an assimilator or a pylon. Whatever he chooses, likely the assimilator would be the better choice. Has more hit points. Oh, uh, no. Oh, it's a though. How will ASD react? He immediately unsieges. He's not going to wait. He's going into the main. Mario doesn't have all his units out yet, though. He needs so much more time. Here comes the War Prism once again, trying to pick up as many units as possible. He needs to get those Stalkers, which is really important right now, especially against the Banshees. He gets most of them. And yeah, this is basically this is all that he can really hope for. And now he has to go. He already moves down with the rest of his army, but the army supply is heavily in favor There's of There's one probe. There's one probe out. That's all he's got. The probe does get away. It was almost killed by a Marine, but the probe gets away. He needs that desperately. If he wants to have any hope of winning a base trade, he needs to send it down to make an assimilator right away. Picks up the siege tank, destroys these Marines. But two of the sentries are already gone, and this will limit his abilities to get Guardian Shield up later. Now, everything is gone at the main base of his opponent, but with the command center, Orbital Command already flying away, the best that Mana can hope for right now. Is it a draw? Does he have Phoenixes? Yes, he has three. Yeah, he's got three Phoenixes. He needs to actually use those to kill the Orbital. 
All the flying buildings of the Terminal player, ASD is immediately picking everything off in order to retreat, but this could be a bit of a stalemate here. The Phoenix are already trying to hunt down those command centers and the flying buildings all together, but this is going to be so close, and I don't think that ASD will actually be happy to throw for it at all. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think so. I don't think ASD is going to be able to lose this game unless he makes a lot of critical mistakes. For example, one mistake he's making right now is not moving his 12 SCVs. They could be making so much with he has a thousand minerals in the bank, and all of his SCVs are going to die if he oh just leaves them here. Don't lose. Look at this army wolf. There is so much. 56 marines. If Mana had storm, then I definitely would give him a chance of winning this. But right now, can he turn this around? He is so far down in overall supply. The orbital might actually die here. There's no defense, but he has to gather his forces. He has to find a good spot to fight. He has to use those phoenixes to kill banshees. It's the only way. He's gonna pick off these uh -oh. units at the front. I, I don't know if this is the best place to fight. Point Ventral goes down. The marines are dying so quickly here. He would actually a good amount of damage to the marines. A nice oh amount God. of micro here. If Mana is able to pull oh this my off. God. But does Tell he have them. enough against the banshees? He still no. has the phoenixes though. But He's, where are they? They're, they're heading home. They're out of position. They're coming back. They lose oh. the Colossus. But Calder, this is definitely something that is a better position than it was before. The thing is, consider four of those siege tanks were not actually in. Five of them were not actually in the fight. He's got point of adventure to protect his banshees. Mana is in a corner, and I think this may be the end. But at the same time, he was actually looking a lot better when he took down those marines, but then the Colossus died, and a lot of those support units as well. Look at the amount of banshees that we have. Six of them. Oh my god. Zealot's taking some hits here. The probe is down as well. Mana is now down to one assimilator. If he kills the assimilator, the game ends. I don't think that Mana can uh, uh, come back. 34 supply against The Oracle is about to burn though, and that means that he can actually go and chase Phoenix, uh, get, chase buildings with Phoenixes, but he just he can't kill the buildings on the ground. All the ASD has to do then is land his buildings. Yeah, that's so right. The orbital is dead. The and orbital a bunker is as dead well. and only one SCV. ASD is just being so cautious here. I really respect ASD being so patient right now. Just trying to slowly but steadily move next to the ramp. He is revealed, of course, and this is going to be tempting to Mana to try to use his Phoenixes, but he's already sent them out, but he just he can't kill landed buildings. And ASD immediately lands all of his structures back on the other side of the map. Exactly. He knows that there's nothing else left for Mana except a few units at the bottom right. And now it's basically ASD just looking for a good timing to walk in. But even if he completely commits to this attack and just throws everything against Mana, the Protoss player just does not have enough. He doesn't have enough. He's moving up with the Siege Tanks now. The Banshees alone are going to kill a Colossus probably. The Colossus now down to 38 hit points. Mana does not want to leave the game. He knows that his times in the Code A, his days in Code A are numbered if he loses this game. But this is what's going to happen. The Colossi are gone. And everything else is going to die as well. GG. And good luck for the rest of the tournament. ASD takes the series with a 2-1. After being down one game, he executes two one-base timings. And Mana is not able to defend against them. Excellent control and patience in the last two games, especially in game number three. There were several moments where if he had snapped or not been patient enough, he would have lost. A cool idea by Mana to actually elevate all of his units out and go for the base trade. It worked, he forced the trade, they traded bases, but he could not actually fight the army when it came home. Excellently done by both players, but ASC at the end of the day, the better player here today. Mana is now out of the GSL, will be forced to re-qualify if he chooses to. Yeah. A nice series that we've seen, and at first Mana with the game that we had on Antigua Shipyard able to take a lead, but then ASD just turned up the heat with two one-base timings that he chose. And the game on Ohana dragged out for quite a long time, but this siege up that we had, this contained by the Terran player, was just too strong. Mana had a really tough time to go down the ramp. He couldn't attack into the choke point, and it was really difficult for him to uh, break through. He yeah. tried it several times. There were too many Banshees to really allow him to get close enough to the siege tanks to make his Immortal play work, and later on when we had the few, yeah, well, the few Colossi as well, it was just not, he could never get into range yeah. to do some damage. Well, we are going to have a break, but during this break, actually, we're not going to be completely on break, because we're going to have a short little interview with Mana, so we'll be back in just a few seconds, actually, Mana's sitting in between us, we're going to talk to him about his matches, see you soon.
All right, guys, with the setup that we have here, we have to play a little bit of interview ping pong, so you <laughs> unfortunately have to bounce between the two of us the entire time. Uh, I'm not going to ask you how you feel. I probably know the answer to that. But um, what did you think when you played him on the third map after you lost the one base play? What did you think he would do? Uh, I was expecting one on one uh, or any kind of uh, all in. My one on one was the the most obvious choice, I think, because Onohana is a uh, really tough uh, build to, to defend. And even if you scout it, because I scouted it. So, yeah, that's what, what I thought. Okay. Uh, how did you. Was there a point in the game uh, after he set up the contain where you thought, okay, I can win this, this is my chance to take it, or did you think the entire time that you were really behind and just try to stick in, uh, to stick around because you knew that it's the last chance in the last map? Um, there was no point in uh, in game where I thought like, okay, I still can win. Uh, I mean, oh, of course, there was because I still played, but uh, there was like uh, no certain point where I won. Uh, okay. I, I thought I won. So um, when he moved back from my main. Uh, I thought I still have, have a better chance because he was not pushing forward. So I was like, okay, I still have time. I have still some minerals left, so I can make colossus or phoenixes against benches. So I, I must still win, and then make a warpism to. Um, yeah. How did you decide? To, how, like, how did you decide to make that decision? Because it's so risky. And I know you deny the scouting repeatedly with the phoenixes. If he sees that you're basically screwed, I mean, how did you make a decision like that in, in the heat of the battle? Well, this is the only decision I could make. Well, if I move forward, then I, there's like only little choke I can go with my army. So the, ta the splash damage of the tanks will kill me so easily so that was like the only choice and well I could make mothership and must recall but I don't think I had <laughs> enough energy or, or money for that yeah of course not uh, how do you make the choice on certain maps uh, I noticed that on certain maps you pulled your probes away on certain maps you try to save the Nexus what type of decision making goes through your head with that like how do you decide whether or not I'm gonna sack the Nexus now or I'm gonna try to save it uh, um, I try to calculate uh, his army. Uh, if I uh, like manage to, to, to save the Nexus, it's of course way better. And uh, I, I always try not to lose probes because of course of the mining time and an and, and income. So uh, I just try to calculate the army and then I, I think if, if I can save Nexus or I, can, uh, I have to sacrifice it. On the second map, we talked a little bit about it before the games and you said that you want to uh, try to go for the same strategy that you uh, used against Tasia. You didn't do that. What triggered your decision to go for the macro game? Um, I didn't scout uh, his expansion at all, so I was a little bit curious. So I, I tried to play as safe as possible, so that's why uh, I tried not to risk with Double Forge and Colossus play. Especially on Antigua, because uh, a lot of drops may occur. Yeah. So with you right now, out of Code A, what are your plans? I mean, I know that your flight is scheduled to leave on the 10th of October. You said that you didn't really make up your mind whether you want to stay in Korea or not. But right now, your ten what, I what is your tendency? Do you want to try to requalify for the GSL? Or is that a chapter that is basically for you now just ended and uh, you're trying to uh, go for tournaments? Um, I think I will... I will give it a try, like uh, requalify for GSL, but uh, I will still uh, have to talk uh, to my team about it and uh, talk to my brother or even to my talk to myself about it to uh, make the best decision. So, so far n nothing planned yet, but I might give it a try. Okay, uh, so we're basically at the end of the interview. Do anything else you want to say to uh, your fans and uh, our viewers? Well, sorry that I lost, uh, then I, you will not see me more in GSL this season. Uh, uh, I really loved playing here. Uh, Thanks to you guys for casting my games. I, I really think it was good. If not, then I will watch the VODs. <laughs> it was so, good. <laughs> yeah, basically, just thank you. It was a pleasure. Good luck for the future. Thank you. Yeah, good luck. Thank you. All right, guys. So, after this interview, we'll be back with the next game in uh, just a few seconds, as far as I can tell. I think we're jumping into uh, another short break, and then we'll be back with the second game of the day, which is Maru against Effort.